So initially, I had no plans to discuss COD 2024 or what's rumored to be Black Ops Golf War so quickly after talking about it over the weekend, but in the last couple of days, we'd gotten a report of a large sum of new and corrected details about the upcoming title for Treyarch's multiplayer, including a whole corrected list of weaponry, a massive listing of perks, streaks, and more. So today, I want to break down all that you need to so that you're in the know and have all the information at your disposal. As we go along, drop your thoughts down below, like what you're seeing here. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay video with all things upcoming for COD 2024 and beyond. For now, let's jump into it because there's a lot to go over. So firstly, a few disclaimers and mentions. This information today comes from leaker Von Diaz Pog, a name we've discussed here on the channel a few times. His track record has been solid, but as with all leaks, things are a snapshot in time with development. We're still at the least half a year away from this game launching, so we're bound to see some things changed, adjusted, and all behind the scenes in some capacity. But the information we have today is what's present now. Let's start with weaponry here, because initially we saw a leak a little while back proposing the weapons that we'd see in Black Ops Golf War. Of those, they were, for the most part, mentions of their real-life counterparts to weaponry, which we know is not really the naming we end up seeing in-game for a various handful of reasons. Some of these guns are new, some are corrected with their updated names to reflect what they'd be in the game, but here's the weaponry we know of currently. The M4S, Kastov 74, Krig C, VAP-9 or VAP-9, M16, the SA-87, the f Light, the R2, the SR8, the Liana 57, the C58, the TAC F, the Castov 73, the Castov M, the Raptor 9, the Lockman Sub, the VAP 2, the MD 97L, the V Car, the VAP 3, the FMG 9, the AMR 9, the M500, the OCP 500, the Roku 360, the Olympia, the Super Short, the LRC 308, the IP 545, the Saw H, the Saw L, the MK18, the CAMRS or Cameras, the VAP 9, the Castov 97, the Tempest Torrent, the Liana 550, the Castov M, the Ratio P, the Ratio H, the LW3 Tundra, the Lock 9, the Lock 45, the Psychov, the GP13 Auto, Lock 30, TAC Handheld, Dianali, the Law, Panzerfaust, Stinger, and the Hunting Knife, Scout Knife, and Breaching Tool. So a lot of interesting weapons here. Again, some new, some updated, but what I personally find as a point of note is the continuation of the weapon platforms that we've seen thus far. We knew that we'd, or rather we'd heard rumored that the platform system would be returning for Black Ops Golf War in some capacity, but my own personal assumption was that we'd just see the Tekken unified naming of some weapons appear as they would, but in a newer capacity, like new weapon platforms. But it seems like we're just seeing the air quote or origins of some platforms directly related to maybe Modern Warfare 3's recent introductions with things like the Castov and the Lockman platforms. Also in uncertainty, there's a few weapons that are repeats that I'm assuming it'd be weeded out by Vondi and the leaking community if they were genuine repeats in the game files, but It'll be interesting to see how these things work out, like the Tempest Torrent, Lockman Sub, and things like the AMR-9 would play as originals, especially in the Warzone front that we'd have two versions of the same weapon upon integration. Like, we did see that happen with Warzone 1, but obviously it wasn't an ideal scenario. I'd actually be really curious about that overall to know your thoughts on, do you think we should start seeing vaulting of items and weaponry? Like, what would you think of that? Would you prefer to have like a two-year rotation if they plan to keep the integrations alive? Two years is 80 to 100 weapons on any given year after the launch and post-launch content, but adding a third year in would get even crazier. We saw that with Vanguard. That's another 50 weapons there right now rumored for Gulf Wars launch, then an average of another four every season, 20 to 30 more by the end of the year, you're looking at a bloat of at least 150 weapons, which at that point, there's absolutely going to be useless weapons no one's going to touch. All that in one Warzone integration. So do you think it'd be more advantageous to simply just shorten the window of time that we see that crossover happen, especially with like a two year of Modern Warfare window and then a rumored two year Treyarch window upcoming? I feel like if there'd ever be a time to attempt that or to experiment with it, it might be now under the guise of continuity of the universe, if that makes sense. I just have no idea if that'd be the right call or not. But anyways, that's a different proposed discussion here. Let's get back to it. All in all, there's a lot of cool weapons that I'm looking forward to seeing again. The Krig C, C-58, the FAL as the TAC-F, the FMG-9 as the PP-90, the LW-3 Tundra, like tons of good weapons here, in my opinion, that I'm stoked if it's the list that we actually have that will be there at launch. But there's still tons to discuss here, so let's keep it moving. Next, I want to talk about perks. To date, we've seen the following perks leaked for Gulf War. 
Overkill, Ghost, Restock, Spotter, Battle Hardened, Shrapnel, Cold Blooded, Bomb Squad, Grave Robber, Fast Hands, Quick Fix, Hardline, Underkill, Scavenger, Flex, Overclock, Survivor, Operative, Anti Up, Dexterity, Strong Arm, Stalker, Primed, Focus, Bounty Hunter, Double Time, Ninja, Hustle, and two unknown ones called Heavy Metal and Hunt Master. On screen, we'll have all those descriptions just so we're not reading off every single perk here at this, but a few big takeaways. Obviously, you're going to have those basics that have been there in some iteration of the COD MP experience for a decade plus. Like, you're almost always guaranteed to have things like Ghost, Cold Blooded, Fast Hands, Hardline, Scavenger, and other perks like that. But there are a few ones that are perhaps, I think, stand out with some differences, some newer ones, and some other things that are of note. For me, those are firstly Ghost, a nice reaffirmation that it's only while moving that it will be active and protecting players, unlike a certain recent title. Bounty Hunter is the return of the Assassin perk from Cold War, and while it wasn't for everybody, I honestly really enjoyed running this in the perk 2 slot. A lot of the other perks were kind of hit or miss, or I didn't really find them too advantageous to the playstyle that I had back in Cold War, so I take that extra score from killing enemies marked as a high value target. Quick Fix returning is absolutely huge for me, just because I love that introduction of a perk. Like, I love being able to recoup my health after a gunfight and immediately challenge something else without having to feel like I'm at a huge health disadvantage, which obviously, if you don't have Quick Fix on, you're gonna be. The perk Grave Robber is something that sounds pretty interesting to me, because this one is described as scrapping dropped guns to get extra attachments and ammo. So it sounds like a more in-depth scavenger perk, but with no prior perk for comparison in COD history, I'm really curious to see how this one will work out, because, I mean, we see recently in Warzone those redacted weapons that have more than the gunsmith five attachments. So is this going to be something like that where it's almost like an in-game wild card from Black Ops Cold War where you have the gunfighter wild card. You could put up to eight attachments on your weapon. Is that going to be something here that in game you can add it as you go along or what's the case with that? It sounds interesting and I just want to learn more about that, but some certainly interesting things to note, I think, out of this known perk list. Another key takeaway is that a lot of these are repeat or familiar perks, but that's because of the unified engine and because they're all eventually going to potentially have to fit within the Warzone perk system, meaning we'll likely see some of these make their way into the Warzone experience, but also the uniformity of everything to funnel into that one location means that you wouldn't see some of the ones you've become accustomed to in the last couple of years go away just because it's a Treyarch title versus a Infinity War project or Sledgehammer project. So very curious to see what this means further out, but that's a different story for a different day, I suppose. Moving along to streaks. First, before we jump into the streaks themselves, honestly, the biggest thing for me was that we're apparently going to be seeing the standard streak system this time around in Gulf War, not the weird persistent streak system with a cooldown that we had in Cold War. To each their own, that if you liked it, that's awesome, but I thought it was one of the worst streak systems we'd seen in COD history, so I'm happy to see it reportedly returning back to normal if all reports do hold up. That is just your simple earn your streaks for your life and they don't stay after death and there's no cooldown. The only variable that I haven't seen elaborated on or if it's anything that has been mentioned just yet is if the streaks will wrap as they did in years prior and technically if you stayed alive long enough as they did in Cold War as well, but with that still being a thing in the most recent Treyarch title, I wouldn't be surprised if streaks do indeed wrap and you can get more than one life again, which I think would be huge in my books. I would love for that to happen, but I don't know if I've seen that elaborated on just yet. But anyways, here's the streaks. You have things like the RCXD, the Spy Plane, the Honey Pot, Care Package, Counter Spy Plane, Grim Reaper, Artillery, Booby Trap, Napalm Strike, Hand Cannon, Hellstorm Missile, Sentry Turret, War Machine, Valkyrie Rocket, the Cerberus Mark Zero, the Death Machine, Nighthawk, the Attack Chopper, a Gas Strike, a Chopper Gunner, the Harp, Sniper's Nest, Air Patrol, and the Nuke. So again, as with perks, a lot of these sound familiar and are returning items. Frankly, streaks are just like perks at this point through 20 years of COD after finding what works after so many years. There's just always going to be those staple streaks at that point that they're gonna almost always be there, but introducing some other ones. Personal notes for this listing that we've seen so far, I, number one, love, love, love that we're getting a callable nuke here if this holds up. That was embraced post-launch with Cold War as the first time that Treyarch titles would have a callable nuke, so I absolutely love that. I know that Treyarch purists may not, because it's almost like them caving after years and years of not adding one, but I think that having the stakes and the near ability to, at any point, put the game away and call in a nuke to end it and win it for your team, I think that's awesome. And frankly, with matchmaking systems we've seen since 2019, 
getting nuked isn't so much a fear. I can probably count on one hand the amount of times that my sweaty lobbies that I get in standard 6v6 have even gotten close to a nuke, let alone actually getting one. So it's just something that, that opportunity is always there, but it's not necessarily something you have to think about or worry about getting nuked as a regular player. Number two, it's an interesting choice of returning streaks for sure. I love that Sniper's Nest is returning. Absolutely hate that Air Patrol is returning, but I will say I do like that as of right now, at least, it seems to be the highest streak associated with score, meaning that it's not going to be something that you're getting trolled after going on a tear, getting all your streaks, your high level stuff. But then somebody who like ended up getting five kills and played for three flags now at point 190 in your domination match can take him out because he ended up just getting gifted one over time and score accumulation for a mid tier price at that point. Like the air patrol was a middle of the line streak in Cold War that did not require a ton of score to get. So to have that now be above things like a chopper gunner, harp, sniper's nest, and all having to accumulate that in one life, you're probably not going to see it nearly as much. So I don't have as much hatred towards that immediately, which is nice. And finally, the gas strike is the return of the uh, the war crimes kill streak in Gulf War now, huh? I mean, I kind of thought we didn't see white phosphorus return in Modern Warfare 2 because of that, but hey, it's apparently back. And finally, for your equipment and field upgrades, you have things like your C4, IED, impact grenade, Molotov, frag grenade, cluster grenade, Semtex, thermite, combat axe, drill charge, thermo barrack grenade, shock stick, proximity alarm, decoy, EMP grenade, flashbang, smoke grenade, stun grenade, tack insert, adrenaline shot, and spotter scanner. Again, all those really kind of being basic stuff that we've seen since this introduction of the unified COD systems here. And then the field upgrades of the gas mine, jammer, landmine, ammo pack, shield, revive gun, spy cam, rally, and trophy system are all there as well on, again, their standard cooldowns and timers that you'd have with your regular field upgrades, but all, of course, being adjusted by how you end up accumulating points in game. So those timers just being the basic time that if you just sat there, how long it would take for those to charge up. But yeah, a ton of stuff has leaked for Black Ops Golf War, or I guess before it's officially named here, COD 2024. So what do you think of these? You like the weaponry, the streaks, the perks? Whatever the case, let me know your thoughts down below. But if you guys enjoyed the video, you found it out on Sightful, well, do me a favor, drop a like on it. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things COD 2024. In the next month or so, I imagine we start seeing a lot of things leak out, but then towards the end of May, towards the beginning of June, we start to see things officially revealed or teased at the very least. So if you guys would like to stick around for all that coverage and more as we gear up for the launch later this year, I'd love to have in the community. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Modest Espresso. I'll see you later. Take care and peace.